what's going on everybody you've been asking for it so i figured i would do a video real quick of my rosin pressing um hopefully you guys have already checked out the dry sift video that i did showing you how i got all of this dry sift right here in front of us and over here this is the first press and then you got the i mean the first sift and you have the second sift here which the second sifts i usually just use that to like smoke in my bowl and stuff i don't really normally press it um because i really like the first presses uh the first sifts generally are the tastiest you know so that's kind of what i got going on and you got galactic gorilla over here mr cruz right here and we have the roswell here and then this is a mixture of uh, space dust, dark matter, no, not dark matter, um, solar flare, and royal kush. So, um, and these are 25 micron bags that I use. And what I do with these is I take and fold the corner in like so. A lot of people, I think, call this the bottle technique, bottle tech or whatever. Um, I just call it folding the corners in so it stands up when you're done. So, yeah, it can be a pain sometimes to get them to go backwards, but if you just fight with them for a second, they'll usually go. And then, boom. So, yeah, the objective to that is to make a cylinder. So that when you fill it up, it'll stand there real nicely for you. So I will uh, show you filling up one of these bags. I'm going to do the Galactic Gorilla first. And I use a tablespoon, just a simple tablespoon because it fits in the bags nicely. You see? That's how I do it. I'm gonna put all of the first one. You can see, look how nice that stuff's sticking right together. This is gonna be fire. Okay, so we get get some in the bag. Get it to the bottom. Kind of flatten her out a little bit. You can see it's starting to just become a little puck in there. And I'm sure there's better ways to do this, guys. I just, this is just for me, you know. If I was doing this, you know, a giant amount of it, I'm, I would do it differently, but this is, this is all mine, so <clears throat> I'm not trying to uh, do it anybody else's way. This is my way. It's what works for me. It's how I've been doing it for a long time. And I can say that anybody that ever tries my rosin has always really 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 liked it so this is what it is so. <clears throat> all right so we got it all down in there which really didn't turn out to be very much but now i'm just going to cut a bunch of this extra off right here We don't need it on there for anything. And then we just kind of fold it over on top of itself, like so. 
Alright. Hang on one minute and uh we'll bring it to the press. Alright, so here is my press. And I did build the whole thing myself. It's all welded seams and the controller I put together. Um guys go look up Green Jeans Garden on um YouTube. And he has a very detailed video on how to build your own press. Saves you a ton of money. And yeah, that's how I did it. So I always run an extra piece of parchment on my plates here. It just gives an extra area, you know, for slippage. And this is how I fold my bag, my parchment for putting the uh, puck into it. It's probably a lot larger than I need, but this was actually left over from the last time I did some pressing. So, um, I just slide it in there. As you can see, I got it all like that. And these are six by six inch plates. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna make some new ones and I'm probably gonna make them either three by four or I might keep them the full six i'm not sure yet but anyway this is the puck of the galactic gorilla a little bag it's not really a puck yet but it will be momentarily so remember i had that all folded over i'm just going to stick it in here push it back a little bit and i go back just i don't know half inch or so from the front and this is in celsius um, so it's like 167 degrees, I think. Something like that. One six, right around there, anyways. But I actually have a, another controller because when I build the next plates, I will have dual controllers, a controller for each plate instead of just one controller for both plates. And um, that one's in Fahrenheit. I made sure to order the parts so that it was good for me and I just bring it up till it's just starting to get some pressure on it um, which I haven't even reached there right there and I just let it set for a second and you can actually already see it coming out in there just a little bit As you can see, it's starting to flow out of the puck. And there is just like hardly any pressure on that whatsoever right now. So it's just from the heat. And the sooner you can press your material, like if you can dry it and trim it, dry sift it and press it all in the same, if you can dry sift it and press it the same within a day or two of trimming you're going to have the absolute best it's going to be super blonde looking great and just by adding a little tiny bit of pressure it just started squishing right out coming out real nice and again, this is the Galactic Gorilla. It's the first time I've pressed any of the Galactic Gorilla. I think I tried some of the trim, just pressing the trim, and it didn't really, didn't really work out. So I'm going to start bringing the pressure up on it now. So you've got it good and heated. No, I may have it set back a little bit too far to see it start to run. But generally it will run right out of there as you can see it's really starting to get to the edge of the plate now and there really wasn't that much I, I don't know there couldn't have been three or four grams of dry sift there but if you watch the dry sift video you'll see that I really didn't shake it a huge amount 
on the first sift because I try to get the best quality I can because it's not like we have a huge amount. So I like for it to last as long as possible and that's only gonna happen if you have the right if you have enough. You know? Quite a gusher. I wasn't expecting it to actually gush out that much. Considering there really wasn't that much in there to start with. Didn't look like anyway. Maybe we'll just get a really, really, really good return off from this. We shall see. Give it one more push. And I could still go more, but I'll press these a second time. Um, when I'm all done with my first press, I'll bring the heat up just a little bit and run a second press. So let's see what she looks like when I'm pulling her out. keep the puck from sliding into your material because now you see there's a whole bunch of it there. So I'm going to try and get some of that wiped off off camera. Alright, follows me. Alright, so here is the next press is going to be the Mr. Cruz. This is from North Genetics. I don't know if I said that in the last thing. Um, well, actually the Galactic Grill is not from North Genetics, so it doesn't matter. Pull it out a little bit. I do try to get it centered on the plates this way so that I have good pressure, but it's usually forward of center on my plates because they're so big. Um, otherwise, your rosin will just sit on the... Um, plates and you know you really want to get it off the heat as soon as you can so I just go slow when I'm bringing it up to pressure because it allows the dry sift to heat up and start pushing the heat through the little puck sometimes when they're so big like this they'll tend to want to walk forward. So you do want to watch for that because you don't want them to, um, you don't want it to push right out of the plates. Hopefully we don't get a blowout right there on that seam. But you can see when the bag starts to get dark, that's the rosin starting to come out already. It means the heat's starting to really get it through there nicely. Like I say, we just add the pressure on slowly. Because if you go too fast, you'll blow that seam right out right there. She's gonna start gushing here. I'll let it warm up another good little bit before I add any more pressure. You can see it's just oozing right on out of there. <clears throat> Probably ought to fold this up like so. This is Mr. Cruz, and Mr. Cruz usually does not disappoint when it comes to um, oh. that never happens. Anyways. Hopefully nothing will get over there, but if it does, don't worry about that when the time comes. 
Hopefully it doesn't come any further towards us. Should be all set. Let it warm up a little more. That was a pretty thick puck. The next one's even thicker, so. And it does push both ways too. It doesn't just push it out the front. So um, I know some people will fold their parchment right up and have it right underneath the thing, and it kind of directional flow, I guess they call it. But I don't need to be getting all that kinds of tricky and whatnot. So. As you can see, here it comes. And if we hadn't waited to do um, two runs worth of trim in one press session, then this would probably be coming out very, very blonde. But some of the trim was a little older, so I'm sure that is why there's a mixture of uh, more of a golden and then the white, more creamier looking stuff is all mixed in with it because some is new and some's a couple months old but it's always been in the freezer it's one thing we do do as soon as we're done trimming it goes right into the freezer to preserve it for as long as possible because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to just do you know little tiny runs honestly because you know everything costs money the bags cost money the dry ice costs money um, yeah this gives me a little extra medicine, or especially like at night time when I need that little extra kick. Depending on what I've been doing during the day. Um, yeah. Still flowing quite well. You can see the bubbles moving a lot. Um, that means we've still got a lot coming out, which is good. Mr. Cruz has always been one of our best rosin producers. Um, just the way it's always been. I think that's gonna do it for that press. And you can see it's starting to get a little bit darker. So that's telling me that it's time to stop this press. I find when I do that, if I leave my maggot there, it kind of just pulls the whole deal right out perfectly for me. And uh, I can get it out. Oops. Did you pause? Alright, so this is what it looks like. Um, once I take the puck out of there, you can see it's already starting to butter up right there. And over here gonna be good stuff but yeah that's the mr. Cruz and I will show you the pressing of the rods well all right so here is the bag of Roswell so there's quite a bit here hopefully it uh, presses well <laughs> Not really enough to break into two, um, and it should be fine anyway. I'm not even concerned a little bit, so. There it is. I'll just start bringing the pressure on. If you guys are still watching, really appreciate the support um, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not. And uh, hit that bell notification button. We'll keep you up to date whenever I put out a new video. Yeah, that's about all I got to say about that. I don't usually say it, but you know, it does help. I know a lot of people don't think so, but it really does. Too close to the front. The plates are really tipping now. Because that bottom plate, it least just sits on the jack. Um, it's almost perfect, but it does just sit there. And anytime you're doing this, you just wait a minute or so, and you'll be able to go further with the jack without putting any more pressure on it. Because um, it heats it up and it just squishes, you know, starts melting in there. And once the stuff starts to melt, then it just will compact a lot more. And you want to just go slow, especially if you have a really full bag like this, because if you don't, you'll blow it right out and then you'll have a mess on your hands. You'll have to put it in a whole new bag and that is a pain. Major, major pain. So, it's just about being patient and uh, letting it heat all the way through because you saw, you know, that thing was had to have been an inch thick at least, maybe an inch and a quarter thick, so it doesn't, the heat doesn't go through that much material instantly, so just going to give it time to heat it all properly. I can see the bottom of the bag is starting to get really dark, so that means that the stuff is starting to melt and work its way towards the outside of the bag. One of these moments here, and just start squishing right on out. A lot of people use way more pressure, especially if you're new to this, then you'll you'll definitely use more pressure than you need. But once you've done it for a while, you realize that you don't need nearly as much pressure as you thought. And some strains are different, you know. Some strains will just start to flow really fast with a lower temperature and some of them need a higher temperature um, I've never we have not pressed any of the Roswell until this moment right now so who knows it could potentially want more heat it could want less but that was a lot that I just put in there so we shall see should start showing us some treasures here very quickly Unless it's going up the back, I don't know where it's going. Like I said, you just got to be patient. Oh, here it comes. It's just starting. I see a little bit out the back and a little bit out the front edge.
Gonna work it up slowly. Well, a lot of people probably would have already had it under full pressure by now, but it's okay. It's coming out very nicely. Very windy here today. Has been for the last few days actually. And I do tend to get more wrinkles when I have a big pup that I'm squishing to. Just seems to be the way it is for some reason. Don't really know why. Those always seem to do that. And this was also, I mean, of course, all of it was uh, from two different runs. So some of this was older than the other. So we're, again, we're only going to get, you know, it's not going to be real blonde. Which I definitely have pressed plenty of nice blonde rosin. But um, it's only when I can do it right after, right after a harvest and right after it's done trimming. can see she is definitely starting to flow out looks like it's pushing to the sides quite a bit in there said some strings are just like that they just squish a lot slower than others but the temperature has a lot to do with your color too I mean this is about as hot as I would want to go um, and not worry about the temperature itself changing the color because you can I mean people press 200 degrees 210 degrees but their stuff is always going to be dark colored and they're not going to have as many of the turps still in their rosin as they would have had if they could have, uh, if they would have just pressed it at a lower um, temp. Because you don't get the yield out of the press, and you know, if you're uh, with a lower temp. I prefer the taste over anything. <clears throat> I don't know what this will taste like because we haven't had it yet. Hopefully it'll be good. And if not, turn it into butter or something. We'll do something with it. That's about really as long as I want to keep that puck in there. See, there's definitely lots of rows in there. So, I'll just take that guy off. Oh, good thing I stopped because we was starting to tear the center of the parchment a little bit. So, yeah. Mmm, smells amazing. All right. All right, I forgot to hit uh, play. So this is the last press, which is a mixture of space dust and solar flare and royal kush. So yeah, it's just about ready to start squishing here. Oops.
you guys have been here through the whole video, I really appreciate it. You must be smoking something, so leave a comment down below as to what strain you happen to be smoking on. And, yeah. This is going to really start to squish here in just a second. See, it's all coming right out real nice. Got an idea this is going to butter up nicely also. gonna take forever to upload but that's okay get a nice little rosin river going here just a second A lot of times it'll push right out the sides. It'll end up pulling up on the outside edges on there too. Like I say this was a mixture. And the reason it was a mixture is because I didn't have a lot of trim from the three uh, different strains. So I just figured I'd throw them all together. And it's a good thing I did because it wouldn't have been a waste of time to do each one individually have gotten very much out of them. But, yeah. As you can see, it's definitely squishing right on out of there. Usually you just go to wait for it. You'll know when it's heated up good because it just starts squishing right out like it is now. You know, it takes a little bit longer sometimes. But, just the way it is. Let it go for another know, 30 seconds or so. See all the rosin still on that. Let me just scrape that off. Oh, just started to have just a little bit of a blowout right there. Stopped it just in time. Yeah, this is definitely starting to butter up already. You can see it changing consistency all through there. Yeah. And up into there. So, yeah. There it is. That's how I make my rosin, everybody. Nothing real crazy. Just, uh, that's how I do it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um... If you're still here appreciate it and this is my press like I said before I built it 
and it works great. Until next time, stay medicated, because I definitely will. Peace.